Falls and the five-time former champion, Lee Chong Wei, the number two seed up against the youngster, Mustafa. So, of course, our first semi-final this afternoon was women's doubles, so we know who awaits the winner of our next match. It is the world number ones, Matsutomo and Takahashi who beat the European silver medalists, Muskins and Peak, in two straight games. Well, I suppose the only consolation for the Danes in that men's doubles uh, steam was the fact that they managed to accumulate more points than they've ever done before in their two-game <laughs> defeat. But uh, yeah. they need to work on certain things, I think. Yeah, they've got to take this as uh, feedback and say, OK, we've raised our level. Um, they were like 24 or something on the ranking. Now there's still a way, a bit of a way to go before they can uh, challenge the Koreans. Yeah. Well, there is the women's doubles draw from the quarter-final stage. We lost two seeded pairs in the very first round, I can tell you. Camilla Ruti yeah. and Christina Pedersen were beaten in the first round, and then you yeah. withdrew. I don't know if twin sisters. We then lost three seeds in the second round, including so the former champions and current world and Olympic champions, Tian Ching and Xiao Yun Lei. So both these pairs that we're about to watch. Tang Huan Ting and Yu Yang expected to be at this stage as the number three seeds, but Vivian Hu and Wing Ki Wei, it's new territory for them. Chinese pair led out by the younger of the two players, Tang Yuan Ting. Looking to reach her second final here at the Indonesia Open. In fact, between the two Chinese players, they've been in five finals here because Yu Yang has been in four finals, winning the title three times with two different partners. First won it back in 2007 with Zhu Jing, and then twice won it 2011-2012 with Wang Xiao Li. Well, this Malaysian pair had their ups and downs earlier in the year. But they are playing well right now. Hanna de Silva from Sri Lanka, our umpire for this one. Very nice touch that the umpires and so The left hander, Wing Ki Wei, 27 years of age from Salanga. Now they're number 20 in the world ranking at the moment. They have been as high as nine. They went down five places on the Super Series standings, down to 31, because they didn't play in Singapore. They've only played one Super Series tournament this year prior to this. And that was their home event, Malaysian Super Series, when they lost in the second round. Vivian Hu, 26 years of age. And this is their second semi-final of the year because they reached the semi-final of the Thailand Masters Grand Prix Gold. But their opponents so far are three Indonesian pairs, including a second round victory over the world number two ranked pair and last year's beaten finalists. Nidia Krasinda, Meheswari and Gracia Poli. Two straight games, that was. They haven't played against a pair until today from any other nation. So, this... Well, I was going to say it's stepping up a, a mark, but perhaps not when you've already beaten the world number twos. That's Tang Huanting. 21 years of age. She 
as I was saying, was, I was going to say beaten finalist two years ago. She wasn't a beaten finalist. She was in the final, should have been in the final with Margin. But she and her partner gave a walkover to Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei. They were number two on the world rankings for one week from the 14th of April. Earlier this year, Yu Yang, four finals here already. Three times the champion, the 30-year-old from Haicheng in Liaoning province. Well, been world number one with Wang Xiaoli, and she's been world number one with Du Jing. And I think they've struggled to get to world number one status, the, I think they, as a pair, this pair. But there you can see all of their matches in two straight games. Quarterfinal against number eight seats. Players ready to play. Now and Lee So Ki. Yes, I think that's Tomo and Takahashi, the pair that awaits the winner of this in tomorrow's final. I think they're too far ahead, and I don't really see Yu Yang continuing after the Olympics. Well, this is the fourth meeting between the two pairs. The last time they met was just a couple of weeks ago in the group stage of the Uber Cup in Punshan. Three games it was there. That was 56 minutes uh, before the Chinese pair eventually won 21-18. Now, Steen, you've got a better memory yeah. than me as we look at the court officials. Did Yu Yang get selected again after that three-game match against Malaysia? I don't think she did. No. I don't think she did. And they were in dire straits because they were down 18-12 in the third game, but took nine straight points off these Malaysians to win it 21-18. So uh, after that, Tang Yenting was selected to play with the Chen Qingxian. Yeah. Uh, a very successful combination in the rest of the Uber Cup. And, um, yeah. Yes. Yu Yang is playing. I don't know how many tournaments she's got left, but um, maybe Australia. Are you ready? And, um, Ladies and gentlemen. The Olympics, I on think. On my right, and, um, Ting Yenting, Yu Yang, China. In my opinion, once. The best and on my left, player in the world, but now Baung in this combination, Kuwait, I see her as the weak link. Yeah. Uh, and that's not Ting meant Ting as a very weak link. I just see Tang Yunting as being even better because play. I think Yu Yang has stepped it up here as we're going into the final um, month before the Olympics. Yeah. So we saw it. just, I mean, it's like one, women's look. double. The development in women's doubles has more or less... Um, hasn't passed her by, but it's just other players have caught up. Yeah. Her, her beautiful technical skills and, and her uh, great touch. One other players ball. have emulated that, that are more dangerous than she is, especially on the front court. Two, one. Well, of course. We are assuming that Yu Yang, in all probability, will retire after the Rio Olympic Games. Of course, she did announce her retirement after being disqualified from the 2012 Olympics in Service London. Over. And she wrote on all. social media, this is my last time competing. Goodbye, Badminton World Federation. Goodbye, my beloved badminton. And thankfully, a few months later, Three, she changed her mind, decided two. to come back. and. And we've had the pleasure of watching her skills since then. And for her to come back and form another new partnership and get so highly ranked is a testament to her qualities. Four, but I agree two. with you, Steen. I, I think she is just a little bit past her prime. I don't think she's the threat that she once was at the front of the court. Oh, that's nice. It, the problem is that she doesn't really come out so from the front court. Three, uh, and, and that means that you could put pressure on, on um, her partner, Tang Yuen Ting, moving her from side to side. She's going to have to do an awful lot of work. Yeah. So it's uh, over. And, and the opponents Five, can get away three. with giving reasonably good chances to Yu Yang at the net because she hasn't got those um, front court player skills as uh, 
for instance, Zhao Yunlei playing with uh, Chen Qing. And um, Four, five. that becomes really tough. But then again, what was it, 10 out of 11 finals? So Well, they've, they're looking for their 10th yeah. in their 11th tournament. So it's a pair that's still very, very good. Yes. And, and uh, I've seen stranger seven, things than six, they could go four. on to win the Olympics. I don't think it, though. But, but um, I mean, it's definitely possible. Yeah. And of course, the fact that Yu Yang has been ranked Five, world number one six. with two former partners, now number three, but as high as two with her current partner. I mean, her, her, uh, six, all. her status will go down in world terms. I mean, she was only the second player to win three consecutive world titles, but I think that you know, when they first formed this partnership, that there was so much focus on Yu Young because of what she's achieved. Yeah. She's uh, been Olympic champion in the women's doubles in Beijing Seven in 2008. Seven, and I thought that Yu at uh, Tang Yuan Ting was a very versatile play and yeah. sort of fitted in with her. And I think that she's really extended the career of Yu Young because. She has. She yes. Has. Yeah. Wasn't it uh, Yang and Wang Xiaoli who lost the final of the Old England uh, last year they to uh, Tang yeah. Yuan and Bao Yixin? Yeah, in fact, they played against each other in the final of the Old England two years running prior to yeah. them being in the final this year. Playing together, obviously. And last year, they were sort of extinguished by the younger, the younger pair. Yeah. And the year before that, Tang Xuan Ting Nine, played with Ma Jin. So yeah. three consecutive All England yeah. finals with three different partners, this young lady. And very interesting to see, because uh, I guess I felt that Bao Yixin was, was split from Tang Yuan Ting in order to sort of um, um, yeah. concentrate on mixed doubles with uh, Liu Chong for the Olympics, where they were supposed to. Uh, replace Xu Chen and Ma Jin, but now I'm not really sure that's going to happen because no. we've seen Xu Chen, uh, Xu Chen and Ma Jin uh, come through to the final here in Indonesia and it's really been a long time since we've seen any significant um, victories from Liu Cheng and, uh, and Bao Yixin, so maybe Bao Yixin will be the big time loser in this uh, Olympic puzzle. Yeah. Well, and look towards each other, got in each other's seven, way there. There's also, there's some um, mental, mental um, um, challenges in, in the Chinese pair because there's no doubt that Yu Yang has been part of um, the players that Tang Yunting has looked up to when she was younger, and yes. she's probably been helping him, and, uh, helping her, and, and guiding her on her way to the level where she is now. But but actually on court now, it, it's the opposite way around. Yeah. Seven lead to Tang and Yu, and, and um, one of the things that's a little interesting here is that we saw the women's seconds. singles between um, Wang Yihan and, and Kalina Marin. So according to that, the Malaysians are playing on the good side now. That's just not the case because this is not women's singles; this is women's doubles. So the good side for many pairs is actually the one that Tang and Ting and Yu Yang are playing on because they have an easier time killing their attacks because they get helped by the drift it's hard for the yeah. ones playing the far side to get the re correct length on their defense 11, Play. Oh. Mm. Uh, 
like the idea, but that 30, wasn't even close. No. I think the Malaysians needs to come a lot more forward in their defense. So they don't have to lift all the time, but they can play flat past uh, Young. Of course, a little bit dangerous because Chang Yun Ting is a real hard hitter. Seven. Yeah. I think probably the hardest in the women's game. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think so too. Out. Service over. Eight. Fourteen. So it's over fifteen eight. Yeah, that's too easy for you, yeah. Yeah, and it's sixteen eight. I mean, it's, it's good attack from from Tang Yun Ting that sets up her partner, but it's also a little bit um, a little bit too bad defense from the Malaysians. I mean, yeah. they, they can just block it. If they block it, I mean, Yu Yang is not going to kill it. He's only going to kill the miss um, long nine, defenses 16. that they will have. Yeah, that's good attack. I like that. Then sixteen. Still a little bit of hesitation between the two Malaysians. Yeah. Wasn't there? There we saw one of the issues with Yu Yang. She was actually challenging 11, the net 16. and thereby creating opportunities for the Malaysians. Yeah. Because her shot quality from the front court is, is not as good as it should be. I guess in many ways you can say that the women's doubles have become uh, more a team competition instead of a competition where two individual players play a double. Uh, when when Yu Yang was playing with Wang Xiaoli, I mean, it didn't matter that she was out of the game for um, uh, two, three, four shots. Yeah. But but that matters now. Mm. The opponent 16. will be able to put pressure on, on her partner if she sort of falls out. Yeah. And that, that's how, why, why I mean that it, it's become a little bit more of a team that, that, that with two players that are playing together and, and um, sort of supporting each other in, in the skills that we have. Yeah, really reinforcing what you were saying earlier about, you know, you've got to be able to play the opposite position to, to your favorite position if you like to be the front court player you've got to nowadays be able to play from the back as well you can't get away with just playing at the net yes and the problem with the young is that she's for, for nowadays women's doubles unless she had Tang Yun Ting as the partner then yeah. she would be um, exposed and she would be exposed because she's not dangerous enough from the yeah. backcourt she can she can uh, play really good shots 18, but not shots 30. that create bigger opportunities and from the net yeah she's not really uh, killing the chances that sh she should kill I know that sounds harsh but, uh, and, but that's and, and, and she's still 19, a very very good 30. player it's just that yeah. she really needs 
Tang Yuen, a player of Tang Yuen-ting's uh, yeah. caliber to back her up. And maybe it isn't enough. Yeah, good return. So it's all Which uh, confirms my theory 90. earlier that this lady, Tang Yuen-ting, had really extended the career of Yu Young because I don't think uh, Yu Young was was tried with several partners, wasn't she? Yeah. Um, after uh, Wang Xiao Li, it was clear that she was struggling with injuries and so on, and nothing really gelled. No. And uh, I think it's the quality of Tang Yuen Ting that's, you know, maybe Yu Young would have uh, retired before 14, now. Yeah, I, I'm sure she would. Yeah. Please. Called bracket so not pointing in a downward direction. And there's a definite trend that it's almost impossible to yeah. flick serve in the doubles so at the moment. I, I would suspect Game the ratio point. of service fault calls on flicks is like something like 30 percent. Whereas in, in short services, it's uh, definitely below five percent. Yeah. I might even put the ratio a percentage higher than that, Steve. Yes. I think he's been generous. 21 15, opening game to the number three seeds, Tang Yuan Ting and Yu Young. Just 14 minutes in that opening game. And, and the, the problem with that <laughs> ratio between service fall called on flicks and on short services is that I have a hard time believing that. The majority of the players have a legal short service and a faulty flick serve. Yeah. That, that, that just doesn't add up. Yeah. Wong Pei T, amazing coach, former champion here back in 2009 with Chin Yu Hui. Had a good partner as well, the great uh, Gouffet. Yeah, she wasn't too shabby. No. She's certainly in, in my top very few yeah. all-time great doubles players, she female is, doubles she players. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been watching some of the mixed doubles that we've seen here. We haven't had a, a whole lot of them on TV court, but uh, it could be so interesting to see if the nation's mixed up pairs like we see in tennis and so on, because yeah. I, I'm sure we would see some... Um, some of the players that, <laughs> that are the best right now, they will still be the best, but we would also see some mixed combinations that will be absolutely outstanding, in my opinion. Uh, for instance, a, a player like uh, Ko Sung Hyun is, um, in my opinion, doing really, really well, and, and Kim Han Ah is, is supporting him well, but I still feel that there's female mixed doubles players out there who is even Whoa, better no. and even more dangerous. And how good would Ko then be if he had an uh, even mm. better supporting Partner. Well, advocating the good old days, really, aren't you there, Steve? Yeah. Because, uh, One, I mean, I two. had a very successful mixed doubles partnership with Steve Flabberg. In fact, we won this tournament many moons ago. Yeah, I think you extended his career. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, go on, say it again. <laughs> Rubbish. No, but he but, extended uh, my career, I think. And the, the things that uh, sort of prevents it is that now all um, all selections for Olympics and Worlds and Europeans yeah. and everything is about the world ranking. Yeah. And, um, and all, at all the Olympics, you're not allowed one. to have a mixed Ding. country pairing. No, you are exactly. actually at the Worlds. Yeah. Like oh, the umpire is sending a word. Don't call out. I think it was clearly long. I don't think there was any question about the call. 
Yeah, they, the Olympics and the Olympic qualification, uh, the Olympics is in many, many ways the best thing that's happened to our sport of badminton. But there are always downsides in yeah. life. And one of the downsides is, is that if your country is going to support your development with the hope that uh, you can bring back eventually an Olympic medal, then they're not going to support that development with a player other than a player from your country, which is why we nowadays only see these same nationality partnerships. Oh, yeah, I think we could have left that, actually. What a smash from uh, Tang and Ting. She doesn't really care which side she plays on, she just kills it. got to be really careful the Malaysians because otherwise this match is over in a few rallies oh, look at that power again power and placement yeah it's a lethal combination Seven, two. that's exactly a perfect Let example of what you've been Three, talking about yes yeah. she intercepts but yeah. she doesn't put the shuttle away anymore no, no. Young. and that, that's what they need to do the Malaysians in order to get back into this game Will they've be. got to challenge Young at the net got to have the yeah. attack you cannot play defense very well on this side especially not with the firepower of uh, Tang Yun Ting on the other side that's the game that uh, the Malaysians should play. Four, seven. Be really, really focused on the first three or four shots. We must get the initiative there. Young have been practicing front court play. The Chinese coaches can see what's going on as good as any of us. So of course they will be working with her in practice. It's just that front court play has got a lot to do with the experience and anticipation, uh, the ability to read from knowledge of opponents' technical skills and your own partner's shot placement. You've got a little bit better idea than any other players on where the next shot is going to be. That's what the front court player skills is about. So, in your prediction that this the Malaysians needed to be all careful, seconds. otherwise this will yeah. all be over in double quick time. And I think that's, sadly for the yeah. Malaysians, it's becoming true. They, they yeah. really, really need to make a huge effort right now to stop this real dominance. Yeah, they got to 5-8 and that was okay, but now 
Mm. And three more points have slipped away, and the gap is even bigger than 7-3. Yeah. So um, I don't really see Boon and uh, Hold coming back here. We talked about that they Play. played um, only a couple of, oh, actually only one Super Series this year in the Malaysia Open, and I think that's a direct result of the uh, strategy that um, technical director Morton Frost has implemented in, in Malaysia, that, hey, we don't play Super Series Swift tournaments point. over and over again, losing in the first round. Then we have to play some other category of tournament where we can actually prove ourselves that we are capable of winning matches and that we... Uh, develop our game. Yeah, and I like that strategy too. Yeah. And I have to say that I think that was sort of the strategy, whether it was designed or not, by the Danish men's doubles pair that we've just seen in our previous match because they started playing the Super Series a couple of years ago and until this tournament had never even been in a quarter final. No. And they started to struggle, I felt, at the end of last year. The first six months or five months we've had of this year, they've been playing some international challenges, they've been playing some Grand Prix golds, they've won a Grand Prix gold, and I think that getting used to winning again and yep. getting that feeling of, of winning is a good combination, and, and like this Malaysian women's doubles pair, now they've, they've benefited from that and they're a better pair altogether. They play matches, they play long matches, they get a position that's uh, suitable for them, Get confidence. There's no no harm in playing a couple of um, big tournaments. Just for a lot of pairs, it's healthy to go one tier down and, and play a tournament also where you're favourite. But it's a lot of players love to play the love to play upwards because yes. you can play free. Yeah. And what if you lose in a challenger or a Grand mm. Prix or a Grand Prix gold? Then a lot feel they have some explanation to do. But the problem is that it's the other way around. If you never beat anyone good, you have to do some explanation. Yeah. 14, 6. Uh, this, is a, this is not a good uh, performance from the Malaysian pair. Yeah. I don't know whether they are a little bit um, satisfied or disheartened by uh, the beginning of this match. Uh, they, they played two reasonably tough matches, even though they weren't... Um, Three game matches, but, but um, both the uh, pre quarters and the quarters were uh, yeah. mentally tough matches. It seems like they've got nothing left in the tank for this one, at least. because Yu Yang, so early on in that rally, 15, seven. appeared to be sitting on the floor. Oh, she was so down on her haunches. And this is one of the situations that Thank is actually you. quite good. That's when she Thank takes you. a side from the front court, Yu Yang, and, and covers one side. Yeah. It's the same if you're playing... Uh, male player playing uh, mixed doubles and the female player is always standing in the middle of the court, then she's actually covering nothing. As long as she steps to one of the sides, it doesn't really matter which one, then she's covering yeah. something. Yeah. And it is basically a mixed double style women's doubles that the Chinese pair is playing. Oh, my goodness, Vivian Hu almost lost her balance there. She did lose her balance. Nice slip. 15. Let's another look at that. Looked like she twisted her ankle just a little bit. Oh, but yes, she did. Oh, dear. I didn't like that. Dear, dear me. No. 
A shot from yeah. Vivian from Winky Way. Seems like the Chinese pair took the most learning away from uh, the match at the uh, Uber Cup. Yeah. It's absolutely dominant. 18 9. I guess if the Malaysians had been from China and played like this, you would have. Uh, that they were more or less conceding the match to their yeah. compatriots. It's really not a good performance. No. Disappointing for them as much as anyone. I don't think they try enough. I don't think they try enough, the Malaysians. They cannot be satisfied with themselves coming out after this match. Where's the fire in the eyes to yeah. reach the Super Series final? I mean, the, the, they had an 18-12 lead in the third game in the Uber Cup. Definitely, it's doable. Yeah. We haven't seen them pursue that possibility. First match point opportunity is converted. 21-15, 21-9. In just under 30 minutes. Well, in some ways, I totally agree with you, Steen, because there wasn't enough really visual fight, however much they may have been fighting inside. After the first game, they capitulated. Of course, we have to give credit to Yu Yang and Tan Kuan Ting. And what a phenomenal record it is. Tomorrow, they will contest their 10th final in only their 11th tournament together. This time last year, they want, weren't a partnership. Confirmation, 21-15, 21-9. Just one more semi-final to come, and it features the only remaining home player. Isan Molana Mustafa, the 20-year-old Indonesian, up against the five-time former champion, Lee Chong Hai. Well, you can hear the atmosphere is building. Officials. 
Well, as far as the destination Dubai list is concerned, three Chinese players in the top ten and three Danes. In fact, there's three Danes in the top six. Uh, Lee Chong Wei has only played three of the four Super Series, and that's why he went down three places to number nine. And the man who won 